quoted and Ben Bird, a great friend and a sports editor of the Knoxville Journal said, I said, you had to have courage to play football. He said, John, he said, you may have to have guts to play football, but you've got to have courage to fight a war. Tennessee literally named the volunteer state for the willingness of her sons and daughters to serve the nation in times of war and peace. Today as a nation, we bless those who have served and are currently serving. Today as a university, we thank those among us who have served and we remember those who have gone before. The University of Tennessee has sent many into service. Today we sat down with former players to hear their historical stories. I was at a softball game in my high school and they announced over the speaker that Japan had surrendered, you know. Everybody, they had these little flags and everybody raised up. We also remember those who went to war and never returned, paying the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Lining the upper deck of Neyland Stadium are four names. Bill Nowling, number 32. Rudy Clare, number 49. Willis Tucker, number 61. And Clyde Fusen, number 62. These four men were Vols who gave up the game of football to fight in the Second World War and ultimately lost their lives. Their names and numbers will forever be etched into the Tennessee history as they were retired and honored in 2006. Willis Tucker, one of the men, was killed on November 28, 1945, fighting on the German-Belgian border and was buried in the same section of the Knoxville National Cemetery as General Robert Neeland. Tucker's son, Mike Sanders, has heard many stories about his father's accomplishments on the football field, but the one he is most proud to tell is how his father got his nickname Crutch. As the story goes, no one knew why Tucker was called Crutch and he preferred to keep it that way. Tucker earned the nickname because he spent his spare time making crutches for a local children's hospital. Rudy Clare was known for his unwillingness to quit. He helped Tennessee win the 1943 Sugar Bowl and left for the service immediately after eventually becoming a second lieutenant and a platoon leader. Clara was killed fighting in Germany on February 6, 1945, and was posthumously awarded the Silver Star. Bill Nowling, a three-year starter who lost only four games in the Tennessee uniform and helped win an SEC championship trophy in 1940. He was supposedly going to be one of the best fullbacks we ever had. He was going to be such a great player. And then naturally he got drafted. Nowling lost his life on August 9, 1944, at the age of 23. Clyde Fusen, better known as Ig, was considered by many, including Coach Neyland, to be one of the greatest football players to come out of Tennessee. After winning the Sugar Bowl against Tulsa 14-7 in 1943, Fusen went off to war. Clyde was killed on December 4, 1944, serving with the 84th Infantry Division. The Tennessee football program has always been closely tied to military and veterans. Robert Neyland didn't get the nickname the General without reason. Neyland considered the selflessness and determination of soldiers to be essential qualities of football. And the General certainly was an honest, honorable man. He was a West Point graduate, and West Point graduates are taught to fight wars and to win wars and to be great leaders. I have the greatest respect for anybody that graduates from any one of the military academies and anybody else who volunteers for the United States services.